NFL.com's uh, lead draft writer. Is it official? Is it NFL.com or NFL Media? How should I say that? I always. I think. Yeah, I've been told NFL Media. I don't. I don't think you get scolded yeah. if you say the other ones. <laughs> That's okay. fine. But just I just want to be fine. respectful. NFL Thank Media's you. lead draft writer Eric Edholm is here with us. Um, so go on and go inside this car process and. Uh, I can't resist which team wants a used car. Um, <laughs> but see, David Carr talking about Derek taking his time here, and I respect it. I mean, this is a huge life event, as they say in Human Resources, Natalie, what, life-changing event, whatever. You know, he's, he's, he's moving to a different place for the first time. He's probably still processing his release from the Raiders and how things fell apart. I get taking your time, wanting to make sure you set up the right situation. But those are two teams that have a clear need at quarterback and can be in contention with a quarterback. Um, there's another quarterback, a certain quarterback who's now in a who's still in a dark place, I guess. And I don't know if he's if we've seen smoke, if he's come out with his if he knows what he's gonna do. But like if you're Derek Carr, this should be the opposite of a long process, should it not? Shouldn't you do this expeditiously and 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 pick one of these teams so that you have your pick of teams, and you don't have to compete with Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, you have the chance uh, to be the first domino, if you will, for Derek Carr. And it's going to be a fascinating quarterback landscape this entire offseason, as you mentioned. I mean, kind of the the Roger, you know, is there another veteran that's let go? We don't know. Uh, you have four-ish draft prospects who could be first rounders who, you know, are, are part of the equation farther down the line. But yeah, if, if, part of the beauty of him opting out or, you know, getting uh, released essentially um, is the ability to pick first, right? And firing that first shot, you get to land in, in a place that you choose, obviously, but also it prevents another team from getting excited about the possibility of somebody else joining them. And you mentioned the four fifths. I mean, I, you know, I guess you could throw Carolina in there. Uh, potentially, you could throw Indianapolis in there. If they want to continue to go the the uh, the retread quarterback route. What um, what are what's your if you were advising Derek Carr? What would you tell him? Like, hey, man, stop messing around. This is the team and this is the situation for you. Yeah, I mean, if I'm his agent, I'm thinking money, right? I mean, obviously, that, that's going to be a big factor, but you never want to sign a contract. Uh, for a little bit more money that may end up being a dead end situation or, or somewhere that could, uh, you know, significantly hinder your your progress or anything. I mean, you know, Derek's probably on the back nine of his career. I think he obviously, obviously had a, you know, a good run in, in Oakland slash Las Vegas, but uh, it's important for him to land a really good spot. And the Jets offer a lot of appeal. I mean, defensively, they're coming off, first of all, a great draft for both sides of the ball, but yeah. offensively, they have almost everything besides the quarterback. You could argue tackles the need. Maybe they need to refine tight end a little bit, get some more depth in the backfield. But goodness, I mean, I can't think of too many other spots offensively that, you know, that that are more appealing right now. The Saints are a little bit of an unknown. I would Carolina. say the Saints. And, and, that's, and that's, not my New Orleans, that's not my New Orleans roots. And that's not okay. because it's Mardi Gras. But, right. I, I mean, honestly, I think just knowing that town, knowing that community, knowing that fan base, it's like, yeah. Ironically, he doesn't have to be the Saints savior the way New York would need him to be. Um, Good point. I mean, I, listen, Derek has been through a lot. I know there are statistics to support the lack of support that he received all those years with the Raiders on defense and special teams. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, he couldn't handle New York. I mean, who's to say we've never seen him in New York, but New Orleans, there's such a, a different type of love affair. Don't and don't mistake it. It's there's passion there. And that fan base oh, yeah. can be harsh, but I think they would embrace him in the way that he needs to be embraced right now in a different way than I think New York might. Um, they got a, a, a good veteran defense. They've got a young stud wide receiver or wide receivers. We'll see about what happens with Kamara. Uh, obviously, there's a Dennis Allen familiarity. So now I go to New Orleans. Hell, I don't know how they got. He must not have had the right gumbo because I have no idea how, how they left New Orleans in the first place without signing a deal, Natalie. Yeah, I mean, New Yorkers get such a bad rap, huh? Um, <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think a fan base like the Jets would actually really embrace him, but both seem like really great destinations. I'm curious, Eric. It sounded like you were about to say like the the Saints could be a fit, but do you like if you if you had to pick or like Mike said, if you were advising him, is it the Jets? Is that where you think he should go? 
I, Mike makes great points about the Saints and their fan base and, you know, how they can, they can uh, you know, wrap their arms around a quarterback. Drew Brees is the obvious example. I mean, I think in 2006 when Brees went there, Saints fans were just excited that someone chose them, Somebody right? I mean, that for a That's long exactly time, right. Exactly I, right. they were just ignored. And yeah. it was a bit of a lucky thing, right? But this would be a different situation, I think, obviously, but because the Saints have had sustained success for the last 15 plus years. But they're obviously in a spot right now where, you know, they paid for having Breeze on the roster. And now they're going to have to keep kicking the can down the road and make tough yeah, decisions on Michael Thomas and, you know, whoever else. They've already started restructuring guys like Eric uh, McCoy. Um, but yeah, if, if they can find a way to come up with a, an offer that's competitive, I think it would be fantastic to see him with, you know, Olave and, and the, you know, at least the parts of a good offensive line plus Kamara, you know, before we know what his potential discipline might be after the, the legal trouble. Yeah. Well, let me ask this. I know that he would have more responsibility on the Jets, but do you think he's capable of taking that on and, and succeeding? Yeah, the Jets would really be a fascinating situation. I mean, I think, you know, obviously the defense is really taking strides, you know, and Robert Salah has done a nice job putting this team together. They just added Nathaniel Hackett to his offensive coordinator. I realized that, you know, mm. there, there are there are some car, car ties there as well. Uh, his quarterback coach, for instance, worked with him in Oakland, Todd Downing. But, uh, you know, Hackett, even after the last season when he was Broncos head coach and it was a, you know, abject failure, still respected as an offensive guy and still considered one of the close allies of Aaron Rodgers. It really is going to come down to are there enough people in the building who can support bringing on Rodgers for arguably more money and obviously some kind of compensation as well. It, it will be fascinating. Carr has to be considered a possibility there. But when you hear his brother saying, hey, we're going to slow down and take our time on this, you wonder, you know, are, is he their first yeah. choice or is are the Jets his first choice? So uh, speaking of choices, uh, today is the first day that teams can play tag. And let me tell you, the non-exclusive tag ain't it. Right. The non-exclusive tag ain't it when it comes to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, because I'm not letting nobody in my business. That relationship, and, and I, you know, Natalie dug up some uh, uh, some 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 posts that, that Lamar has since deleted. Uh, would you say, Natalie? Nothing's ever deleted. Um, but <laughs> you know, I, listen, that relationship is 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 it's difficult enough. It's in a tough enough place without inviting somebody else to come in and poison it any further. If it is poison at this point, point. and so if I'm the Ravens, it's like, nah, man. You, you know, like you're playing for us. We'll continue to try to get a long term deal done or we'll do we'll do it year to year if we have to. But there's no way I'm letting somebody else influence because because it, it correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, the non exclusive tag Eric and a team negotiating with Lamar that to a contract a contract that the Ravens choose not to match and then they could either accept the two first round picks or trade for whatever they negotiate. That's not the only way he can be traded. They can do a, an, an, an exclusive franchise tag, more, exclu more expensive exclusive franchise tag, and still, just like the Texans did with Deshaun Watson, say, you know what, we give you permission to talk to these teams because we've already right. worked out draft compensation for them. So if they have to go their separate ways, they can still do it with the exclusive franchise tag, correct? I, I believe so. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to double check on that, but I believe that is the case, right? In normal circumstances, the exclusive tag means he's ours. We've got him. We decide what we're going to do with him. Uh, you pay a little bit more, as you pointed out, but to have that total control, that's that's where your money goes. If you do the non-exclusive tag, he's technically still a free agent, although under control by you. You have, what, I think seven days to match or something like that. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's that's really the situation. How do they play this is going to be fascinating. And, look, they've left the door open for the possibility of a trade, but I think it's clear that their preference is, you know, at least to keep them for the one-year possibility. And, and yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that really is where we're at right now. So, oh, I'm sorry, Natalie, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to just say, well, I didn't – I'm just curious – Outside of Lamar, who else are you paying close attention to, you know, now that today's the first day, um, you know, that teams can franchise tag their players? Who who are you paying close attention to? Obviously, Lamar is the big one, but who else? Right. 
Yeah, I think some of the other ones that are going to be interesting would be, you know, do the the Chiefs consider tagging Orlando Brown? You know, they made a trade with the Ravens to get him. You know, the the results I think were obviously positive in the sense that they won a Super Bowl with him, but uh, some people questioning whether you know he's worth sort of franchise money at that spot, or you maybe you let somebody else. You know, obviously you just stay on the Ravens too with uh, um, blanking Marcus Peters, the corner. Uh, can't tag two players so uh, you know he's going to be one that possibly slips through and jesse bates i don't think will get the tag in cincinnati i don't know that for a factor and this is just my speculation but a player who very quietly i think held a, a big value to lou anarumo's defense and you know could end up playing center field for somebody else next year and what is the effect of a team that you know has, has made two deep runs in the playoffs the last two years that put more of the onus on guys like joe burrow etc so those are a couple names that i'll definitely be be focused in on hey uh one more thing before we get you out of here speaking of the chiefs obviously history was made at the super bowl with uh two black quarterbacks facing off for the first time yeah yeah i can hear you uh and uh oh yep history was made the super bowl with two black quarterbacks facing off for the first time and i i, I we witnessed in the last two days or so, a great moment in black history that I want to draw everybody's attention to when it comes to black quarterbacks. Uh, it is silly season, as you know, as, as the draft expert that you are. There was a report that the Cowboys are intrigued by CJ Stroud. Now, here's the great moment in black history. What is the biggest knock on CJ Stroud that for many he put to rest in the semifinal game against Georgia? And that is, is he athletic enough? Right. <laughs> that, I was like, wait a second. That was like, they're asking if the brother can run. Yeah. I mean, we have come a long way. <laughs> is he athletic enough? Does, does he have the improvisational skills? But I was just I was talking to somebody because Justin yeah. Fields, when he was at Ohio State, Justin Fields did not show himself to be anywhere near the runner that he is for the Chicago Bears when he was That's in right. college. I didn't know he had it like that. CJ Stroud, people wonder if he's just a pocket pass, if he can improvise, if he can play off schedule, yada, yada, yada. If Fields had played the way he plays now at Ohio State, or if Stroud had displayed the athleticism that I'm told that he does have in his repertoire at Ohio State, it'd be held against him. So I just had to get that <laughs> off my chest. Having said that, <laughs> this Cowboys thing is completely out of BS, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, they can they can look at him and say there's there's something really interesting there, and they'd be right. And, and you're right. It is funny that that we're at this point now where where a quarterback like Stroud, we can we can start questioning his athleticism. Uh, <laughs> his first touch at Ohio State, I think, was a 48 yard touchdown run. I realize he wasn't asked to do that. I know that Ohio State fans were begging, pleading, screaming, crying. Please unleash this guy. Let him get outside the pocket. And then finally in that game, they did that. And just to back up your point, one more, uh, you know, one little nugget there. Justin Fields, I think, had two 100-yard rushing games at Ohio State. So more prolific than Stroud was, but as you pointed, nowhere close to the usage that he's yeah. been asked to, to to perform with the Bears. So, yeah, this is Ryan Day's offense. There were receivers streaking open down the field. Why wouldn't you throw right. it to him? different situation in the NFL. CJ will be fine in the athletic department, whether it's Dallas, Indy, Carolina, anywhere else. I think he's going to be all right. Listen, I know people down on Dak, but I can't imagine a world in which the Cowboys eat whatever they got to eat to move on from Dak and move up to get uh, CJ Stroud. But it's that time of year, right? It's all fun. That's right. Tabloid conjecture. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate <laughs> you. Ed. Uh, Eric, thank you so much, man. Keep up the great work uh, at NFL Media, and we'll talk to you soon. Eric, get on, ladies and Look, gentlemen. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Natalie, I'm stealing your deleted photos line. Just wanted to let you know that. So, <laughs> thank you. Oh, no, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.